Welcome back, folks, for a new episode of Leaked. Today, we're going to cover the Czechoslovakian branch for the tanks that's likely coming during Christmas of this year. So why the Czechs? Well, their tank designs heavily influenced the German Panzerwaffel, the armored forces, during the initial stages of the Blitzkrieg. So when Germany overtook Czechoslovakia, they took hold of the Panzerkampfwagen 35T as well as the 38T and utilized them for the Blitzkrieg alongside with the Panzer Ones and Panzer IIs. Later on, some of the 38Ts were converted into tank destroyers such as the Martyr III and the Hetzer. So they were very important during the initial war stages for the Germans. So here is the overall news. It will be announced during Gamescom alongside with the Japanese heavy tanks. So they have their own insignias and flags, consumables, the Buckland, and crew. So these tanks are not part of the EU tech tree, should there ever be one. But here are the crews, the dudes and dudettes. And here is the Buckland. It's a cake with powdered sugar on top and appears to be jelly in the middle. So that's their premium consumable. Now this will be a medium tank branch with light tanks up to tier 3. So tier 1 through 3 will be light tanks. Tier 4 through 10 will be medium tanks. The color of the tank is either dark brown or dark khaki-ish of a color or post-war olive like the Russians except a little bit greener or darker. The playstyle will be a mixture of good mobility and decent guns but under average armor so like the French mix in with some American characteristics. Now these tanks should be released around Christmas, a patch after the release of the premium tank, the Skoda T40. Hopefully I pronounce it correctly, but it usually follows a patch after the premium tanks. So for example, the Chinookai was released a patch before the STB-1, the AMX CDC was released a patch before the AMX 30B, and the Japanese Tiger 1 should be quote unquote released a patch before the Japanese heavy tanks. So here are my future predictions. So 9.10 will be the Japanese heavy tanks, early September or so, or late August or this month. 9.11 should be bug fixes and technical improvements, introduce the Skoda T40, and maybe the replacement of the British tier 10. So this should be late October or so. 9.12 should be the Czechoslovakian branch, and that's around Christmas. So that's probably the shape or outlook for this year. Here is the main tech line, the medium tank tech tree for the Czechoslovakians. So at tier 1, we have the Kolohauzinka. I'm going to butcher up so many words today, so tolerate. <laughs> it's, uh, it's this thing. <laughs> so we'll go into more detail of each tank, but here is a general picture. Tier 2, you have the original Panzerkampfwagen 35T. At tier 3, you have the 38T. Tier 4 is the STVZ 39. These four tanks from tier 1 to tier 4 have been produced, whereas the tier 5 through 10 are paper tanks. So tier 5 is the Skoda T24, T25 at tier 6. Now this is exactly the same as the premium tier 5 German medium tank, the T25, except that this version has an auto lean cannon, whereas the tier 5 has a single shot. You also have the premium Skoda T40 with the KWK-36, the 88mm L56 gun. So here is this picture. I'll do a leak video about this tank tomorrow. Tier 7, you have the Konstruka T-34 with a 100mm gun. Tier 8 is the TVP VTU concept. Now I'll go through what the acronyms stands for, but it's a concept tank, so it's a paper tank. Tier 9 is a Skoda T-50. And tier 10 is the T50 slash 51. At tier 1, we have the Kalahauzinka. So this is a wheel come track armor vehicle based on the Renault FT17. Now pause this video if you want to read through everything because it will take too long for me to do so. But there were three versions of this vehicle. One with 50 horsepower, one with 60, and one with 70. So it looks like it has training wheels for a tank. <laughs> So dual wheels as well as the caliper tracks, that's kind of funny and interesting. Armor is only 14mm at best, has a 37mm gun, which is quite good for a tier 1. Crew of 2, 
top speed of 18 kilometers per hour, so it's not that fast. So this is basically a slow tank with a very good gun at tier 1. Tier 2, you have the original Panzerkampfwagen 35T. The T stands for Czechish, which is silent for the T at the beginning. So this is German for Czechoslovakian. But it is the 35T you know at tier 2 from the German tech line. So armor at best is 35mm, has a 37mm gun. Crew of 3, better top speed of 34km per hour than the tier 1. So it's the light tank. Tier 3 is the 38T. So this is the same as the 38T at tier 3 for the Germans. Same gun. A little bit better armor for the later version. I don't know which version they're going to put for the Czechoslovakians, but you have different versions with different armor. Crew of 4, even faster top speed of 42 km per hour. So, decent tier 3. Tier 4, you have the STVZ 39. So this is only a prototype tank. And um, the only reason they never built this tank is because of the German occupation. So it's the first tank to be sealed against gas attacks by overpressuring the crew compartment. That's kind of interesting. Only two prototypes were ever built. So armor wise, only 32 millimeters at best. So a little bit regress from the 38T at tier three. But the gun is a little bit bigger, 47 millimeters with a crew of four, 43.5 kilometers per hour top speed. So it's a little bit faster. Tier five is the paper tanks. The Skoda T24, so this was a prototype for the replacement of a few 38Ts. So this is conjunctioning with the T25s, so there were two versions. The T25 wins over the T24, so that's why the T24 never made it, but the T25 also never made it, but whatever. So armor wise, only 60mm, so not that well armored for a tier 5, but all right, has a 75 millimeter gun with a single shot. So this is the gun on the T25, the single shot cannon, but you can also mount an auto loading cannon with less gun barrel length. So this probably has less penetration, but it's an auto loader. Has a crew of four, top speed of 38 kilometers per hour, which is quite fast, but it only weighs about 20 tons. So it's a light vehicle, but it's a medium tank. So it's like playing with a premium, T25 at tier 5. Tier 6 is a Skoda T25. Now this is exactly the same as the premium tier 5 version, except you can have an auto-loading cannon with the 75mm gun. The armor is the same, top speed is 60 km per hour. Now they will probably buff the mobility of this vehicle from the tier 5 version. But it's a pretty light medium tank, only 23 tons. So you can read through everything. So it's meant to replace the Soviet T-34 or compete against it. Here is the tier 7, the Konstruka T-34 slash 100. So this is a T-34-85 trying to mount a 100mm gun. Now there were a few attempts to switch the guns out, but one version actually made it. So they produced uh, a T-34 slash 100, but it cannot compete against the T-44s and T-54s that were also being developed at the same time. So this project was scrapped. The project was successful and they liked the tank, but yeah, it was too little too late. Armor wise, it's the same as the T-34-85 as a 100 millimeter gun, which is similar to the D-10T with only three degrees of gun depression. Crew of four, 54 kilometers per hour top speed and weighs 34 tons. So it's like the super version of a T-34. Like Super Sherman to a Sherman tank, something like that. Tier 8 is the TVP VTU concept model 1946. So this is, TVP stands for, oh man, tank, oh gosh. <laughs> this means general purpose use, medium tank of general purpose use. Basically main battle tank. That's what the TVP stands for. The VTU is the technical institute for the military. So that's what this acronym stands for. 
It's a prototype tank to design to be the main battle tank, but it was canceled because the Czechoslovakia was now occupied by the Soviet Union and they were producing T-34 85s now, so that kind of sucks. Armor is only 65 millimeters at best, but can mount a 105 millimeter gun, so quite heavy armed, light, lightly armored medium tank. Yeah, it's kind of like the AMX 30 Bs. Ugh, crew of five, top speed of 50 kilometers per hour, and weighs only about 33 tons with 105 millimeter, or the 30 tons with the 88 millimeter. At tier 9, we have the Skuda T50. Now these TVPs share a lot of similar elements from the Germans, the Russians, as well as the British. So the hull designs look like Germans, the turn designs look like Russians, and the gun is uh, British slash Russian. So they took a lot of elements from different nations and combined them. So armor wise, it's only 112 millimeters at best, so it's not that well armored. Has a 100 millimeter gun with 265 millimeters of penetration and 8 degrees of gun depression. So it's like a Russian tier 10 medium tanks gun, quite good. Crew of 4 or 5, has 60 kilometers per hour top speed and weighs 40 tons with a 100 horsepower engine. So the power to weight ratio is 25, which is very good. And this thing is very fast, but the armor is not that good. So it's like a AMX 30A or AMX 30 prototype. And finally, at tier 10, we have the Unify TVP projects of Skuda and CKD companies designated as T50 slash 51. So this tank is a paper tank and the final tank before the Soviet Union pressured the Czechoslovakians into producing T-54s and T-34-85s as the main tanks for their army. So this is the last remnant of the Czechoslovakian tank designs. Has the same armor as the tier 9 version, 112mm at best, with a 100mm gun. Now they say it's autoloaded, I don't know if it's an autoloader or it's the same as a IS-3 mechanized ammo rack system where that thing is autoloaded quote unquote but has 265 millimeters of penetration, 8 degrees of gun depression with premium heat shells of 330 millimeters of pen, crew of 4 or 5, top speed of 60 kilometers per hour, 1000 horsepower engine and 40 tons so the same horsepower per ton ratio of 25 like the tier 9 version. So basically this tank has slightly better mobility in terms of soft stats if you're going to compare with the tier 9 version or it probably has a autoloading cannon for the 100mm gun that would be great but these are the tier 1 through 10s of the Czechoslovakian medium tank branch and let's sum it all up with an overview so almost all tanks are prototypes or paper tanks with the exception of the Kalahauzinka and STVZ-39 the tier 2 and tier 3 are nearly the same as the Panzer Kampfwagen 35 and 38Ts. So it's shaping up to be like French in terms of armor. There's no armor whatsoever. But the selection of the guns might be the strength of these tanks. So it plays like German guns from lower tiers to middle tiers. And like Russian guns at higher tiers. So that's probably the strength of these tanks combined with the mobility. Now the Konstruka T-34-100 might be the weakest link because of the three degrees of gun depression so it might be the worst tank to play but nah we'll see now what is interesting to consider is that these tanks might be a whole line of amx cdc they fit the niche of having medium tanks with no armor but relatively good gun handling and mobility so that's the niche they're going for but this niche is already covered by the japanese medium tanks so that's kind of weird and not as interesting per se as the Japanese heavy tanks where those tanks fits a niche for heavy tanks with super armor and very slow mobility but they play like bunkers so no tanks play like that before other than the later parts of the German heavy tank line so that's kind of weird how these tanks fills a niche already occupied by the Japanese medium tanks the French doesn't have medium tanks for the middle tiers and they're Lower tier medium tanks are more like heavy tanks, so they don't count, I guess. So that kind of sucks, but oh well. Now, 
I think the TVP model 1954 was scrapped because it's too fictitious. So originally this tank is a what if combination of E50M, the TVP T50-51 and the T54. So it's like a Russian version of a Batchat I guess. So I guess it's too fictitious and they scrapped the idea. And most importantly, the MVPs of this video, Mr. Frank Davis, also known as Silent Stalker, the guy who wrote for the record, and a ton of info about the Czechoslovakian tanks, and Mr. Jerry Tentira, he is the World of Tanks history consultant for the Czechoslovakian history or tanks. So these are the two main guys who provides a lot of information for this video. So thanks to these two guys for their contribution. And thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Now that you're gone, I feel the sickness crossing my veins. It's beginning again all my life. This broken record breaks. I thought that I was ready to change. It's beginning again.